Okay, let's recap on what we did yesterday. If the second derivative is positive, what can you tell me? What can you tell me? Okay, you can tell me d square y dx square is positive. But what is the conclusion? Ah, minimum, don't tell me just point, yeah? it's a minimum value. Alright? Similarly, if your second derivative is negative, or like what Luffy will say, d square y dx square is less than zero, you need to conclude this is a maximum value. Okay, how do I do all this conclusion? Now I'll zoom in a little bit. Look at the numerator. Y. It's in terms of Y. This means that my Y is minimum. Remember, if I look at the minimum point, I look at the coordinates of Y. We said that yesterday as well. Similarly, eh, this is also in terms of Y. So this means that Y is maximum. Okay, I'll make use of this concept for the word problem later. Okay, let's underline the important information. The height is 8 centimeter. Okay, height is given. The radius is RCM. Okay, there is the height of the cone as well. Radius is also R, but the height is 2R. This is for the cone. These are all the information given, but more importantly, the most important information, the volume of the whole thing is 60 centimeter. I think there's a missing cube. Wow, I must write to the publisher already. Or is it my book? Ours have cube. Also don't have? Oh, wrong. Okay. Uh, so I'll tell them. Volume must be cube. Am I right? Okay. Okay. Take note. We need to use this thing. This one is I introduced myself. Huh? This is a constraint. Eh? No T. What do I mean? The volume is limited to 60 cubic centimeter. That means uh, our volume must be limited to 60 cubic centimeter. So our job is to make use of whatever info, form it to 60 cubic centimeter. So like what you told me, so I'm going to write down the volume of the cylinder. Pi R square H. Volume of the code. One third the base area. Pi R square, which is a circle, times the height. But what is the height of the cone? 2R. So I put in bracket 2R. So the volume of the cylinder and the volume of the cone will sum up to how much? 60. Because you must match up to the constraint. Now your job is very simple. Change of subject or formula. Please, whatever I written, make H the subject. You only need two steps. Okay, I want to make H the subject uh, as indicated over here. So this one, the term with H, I don't touch it. The term without the H, I balance on the right hand side of the equation. So I continue writing. 60, I multiply inside, so I get a 2 third pi R cube. I only want to make H the subject. So if I only want to make H the subject, what do I do to the pi R square? I divide everything by pi R square. Thank you, just one. So what would I get? 60 over pi R square minus 2 third. Pi R cubed divided by pi R square only left with R, right? Eh? Is this the same? It's the same also, right? Ah, so... What must I do? Show. Okay, so in part 2, we need to find the total surface area of the open container. There's a cylinder. You need 2 pi rh. There's the cone. 
where the formula for the surface area is pi r l, where l is the slanted length. Where you all told me we make use of Pythagoras theorem. So, show where I zoom in on this part. I want to find the slanted length. Alright? So, the slanted length will turn out to be square root of 5 r. So now, I just need to plug everything inside the formula. Okay, like what Luffy mentioned, if I were to put in my value for L, square root 5R, this is what I have. But, look at what you need to show. All your answers are in terms of R. There's not, hey, sorry, all your answers are in terms of R. So, you need to make use of your H from part 1, substitute it inside, which is what I'm going to do. Alright, then you expand and simplify. Okay, but after I expand and simplify, eh, guys, how come my one doesn't look like the one in the question? What must I do? There's something I need to do. It doesn't look like the one in the question. Yes, I will need to factorize. Notice, this is a common term. So I will need to factorize it plus. Okay? And rewrite in the way as given in the question. Then please remember to write down should. Okay, I think this one should not be worth two marks. It could be worth three marks. So there are three things we need to do uh, in part three. Stationary value. But guys, ladies and gentlemen, you tell me stationary value. Yes, gradient equals zero, dy dx equals zero. But... In this question, where I got dy dx? This question has what? What is the subject? A. It's in terms of R. So can I use dy dx? Yes, you need to change. Be flexible. dA dr. Because A is the subject. It's in terms of R. Alright? So doesn't mean always... Gradient equals 0, dy dx equals 0, depending on the question. This means to tell me the first derivative is equal to 0. Alright, so I'm going to do that. Okay, so we did mention the first derivative must be equal to 0, but we simplify it first. After we simplify our expression, then we do our first derivative. Differentiate A with respect to R. Negative 1, 2, 0, minus 2. Plus 2 root 5, pi R. Minus 8 over 3, pi R. Do you have something like that? Okay, because of the word stationary, Alright, remember, I must equate this to 0. I don't want to write another line. So I straight away write equal to 0. Because of the word stationary, I'm writing down beside R uh, to let you know. Now our job, what did they ask us to do? Find the value of R. Eh, very good, law. So I equate to 0, my job is to find the value of R now. Ah, the negative power, I don't know how to solve. So, make it a positive power. But once I make it a positive power, I have a fraction. What should we do? Multiply the whole thing by R square. So, I don't have a R square below at the denominator. Then you become neater. Uh, you look carefully. Are you sure it's quadratic? R times R square is R cubed. Eh? Cubic, right? Don't worry. I'm going to show you a shortcut. Guys, our job is to do what? Solve for R. So, don't go everything press calculator. Notice. Eh? There's an R cube here. There's an R cube here. The rest without R, balance it on the right side. 
okay? And R cube, R cube, I can factorize. So this is what I'm doing. I factorize the R cube out. I balance the negative 120 on the other side. Because I refuse to press calculator, I want to press it all one shot. Magic will happen already, huh? What would you want to do to the bracket term? Balance over, I will divide it, am I right? Correct? Oh, but I need to write this whole thing again. Guys, sometimes I'm lazy lah, huh? sorry. If I want to get rid of the cube, what should we do? Cube root. So I should really write cube root. Then press the calculator. Okay, your job is to press the calculator and tell me what is the answer now. Okay, remember, I need to estimate to one decimal place. Alright, so after I equate solve for R, I need to estimate to one decimal place. So our answer will be 2.8. Is it in meter? Or CM? Okay, it's in centimeter. Uh, okay, our job is to determine whether this R is it a maximum or a minimum. Alright, so you tell me, can you use the second derivative? Can you use the box method? Which one would you want to use? Second derivative. Okay, this is our first derivative. Correct? This is our first derivative. Am I right? Or you can use this one. Can you go and differentiate now and find the second derivative? So let's do it now. d square a dr square 2, 4, 0 r to the power of negative 3. Oh, very easy. Plus 2 square root 5 pi minus 8 over 3 pi this is my answer i don't know whether you get the same answer i think so okay our job is to substitute 2.8 inside when x is equal to 2.8 Is this going to be positive or negative? Confirm. Positive. Why? You put 2.8 inside the R, it becomes a very big number. Am I right? Ah, so no matter what you minus, it still will still be very big. If you don't believe, you can press the calculator. Okay. This is the first time you are seeing it. Huh? Is it positive? It's positive, right? So if this is positive, the second derivative is positive, what is our conclusion? Maximum or minimum? Minimum. Don't just say minimum. Huh? Look at the numerator. What is the numerator? A. A. Write down. A is minimum. Alright? The numerator is A. That means the area is a minimum. A consistent one. Of course, you want a container, you want the surface area to be as small as possible so that you save on the cost. Alright, one more step. What did they ask? Find the stationary value of A. I already know that A is minimum. I know my R is also 2.8. So our job is very simple. Find the value of this minimum A by plucking your 2.8 into the formula for area. This is the formula for area. Am I right? Substitute your x, uh, sorry, your r equal to, don't use 2.8, uh, use 2.7657. You can use the memory. Plug it into the calculator. Okay, can you do that now? Okay, whenever it's not exact, oh, oh, eight. please estimate to 3SF, 
65.1. Okay, and then we have it. 